Welcome to this week's edition of Ask an MS Expert. I'm John Strum, your moderator and host of the Real Talk MS podcast. Each week, Real Talk MS reaches thousands of people in more than 100 countries around the world with the news that people affected by MS need to know. My wife, Jean, lived with progressive MS for 23 years, so I've had a front row seat experiencing all the ways that MS can impact a family. Today, I'll be asking our experts the questions you want answered. Please feel free to post your comments and questions on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. MS Navigators will be online throughout today's live program, answering your questions, connecting you to resources. For many years, healthcare providers have recognized the potential benefit of certain medications that, while not specifically approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for treating MS, can still be highly effective. This practice, known as off-label use, provides additional options that may be more affordable and sometimes preferred by insurers. Joining me to discuss the use and advantages of off-label medications is Dr. Allison Magruder, Clinical Pharmacist of Neurology and Dermatology at Mizzou Specialty Pharmacy. Welcome, Allison. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, John. I'm glad to be here. Well, let's start with some basics. What does off-label use really mean? So basically, it just means that we're using it in a different way than what the FDA has approved it for. So FDA, when we go through that process, will come back with this is this is the label for how the medication is used. And anytime we use that differently than the FDA, that becomes off-label. Can you talk us through the process of how a drug gains FDA approval? Yeah, so it is a pretty vigorous process. Um, There's three trials that you might hear about, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And all of those have to show that the drug is safe and effective for them to even want to take it to the to the um, FDA for approval. And then once all that is submitted, it's reviewed by multiple um, experts to make sure that it is showing that it is safe and effective for the population that we are pursuing the FDA approval for. What we can see is that the FDA may not think that the data is there, but we see that other countries, their um, review process agreed to it and it gets approved in another country, but not in the US or vice versa. Well, with 20 disease-modifying therapies approved for MS, why might a healthcare provider prescribe an off-label medication instead? Um, It could be related to access. Um, So it could be the cost of the medications. Um, Sometimes off-label medications come from generic, which is no longer branded, so they're less expensive. Um, And we may need to utilize those if we can't get access to the other ones. We may have exhausted all of our other ones or taken similar drugs and had adverse reactions, side effects, um, allergic reactions that we would not want to try something else that's similar. Um, Or we may have another condition that overlaps with our MS that maybe um, we could use an off-label medication to kind of treat both. How common is it for healthcare providers to prescribe an off-label medication? Fairly common when it comes to like all healthcare providers. So going to your primary care, there's lots of medications that we know work, um, but we never took them through the FDA to get that route. And so many of our medications get used technically off-label, even though we have evidence to support them, even though they're safe and effective. Um, But it happens very commonly just because we didn't spend the money to go through the FDA to get that exact indication. Haley says she's surprised to hear how common it is and wonders if there are studies to support the use of off-label medications for symptom management in MS. And and Haley also wants to know why the FDA hasn't approved some or all of these off-label medications to be used specifically to treat MS. Yeah, so partly we got to explain why we don't pursue something to be through the FDA, and that really comes down to money and cost. So as medications become, um, their patent starts to expire, then we don't have the money necessarily to spend on it because we're we're not gonna be able to reproduce that money. So companies will sometimes have very preliminary data or even get into like phase one, phase two, but not complete phase three trials because of cost. 
um, but then they have good evidence to support it. They just don't have the money to back going through the process. Um, another reason is smaller populations. Um, we may not necessarily have really good, robust data that could get us FDA approval, but we have small data that supports its use, or we just don't have other options, like for primary progressive MS before Ocrevus. I mean, if we wanted to treat, we had to go off label. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have data, we do. Um, sometimes that data is not robust enough to get through the FDA, and other times it, it unfortunately is a money game of not being able to spend the money and be able to reproduce that money on a brand name medication. Ronnie's wondering if there's a difference between an off-label medication and a generic medication. Yes, so a brand medication is the company that owns it and they give it a brand name. The generic is the scientific name, but oftentimes we refer to a generic medication as it's no longer um, provided by the co original company with that branded name. So we're using that scientific name, but it's being, the patent is gone, it's made by another company. And a lot of times when we get to generics, it's a lot less expensive than the brand name. Um, we can use generics off-label, but they're technically on-label too when we use them. If medications can be prescribed off-label anyway, what's the benefit of a company getting their medication approved by the FDA for specific conditions? Well, the biggest one is advertisement. If it's not approved through the FDA, a company cannot advertise for it. They can't advertise to the doctors. They can't advertise to patients. Um, they can't say this medication treats MS. Um, so there's a lot of restrictions. And so then that data really has to come from um, doctors being aware themselves, going and getting that information by researching it on their own. And so they don't have any, any information coming from the company about it. Rico says he's interested, but skeptical. He wants to know if there are risks associated with taking an off-label medication. Yeah, so I think when we talk about risks, there's definitely risks to off-label. We need to understand there's risks to on-label as well. So anytime we're taking a medication, there, we should be concerned about what those risks are. There's going to be cases where the risks are outweigh um, the benefits, and therefore we don't go that route. But there are going to be times when we look at the risks and realize that even with those risks, this is um, a good avenue for me to go on. Is there a different process for gaining approval from your insurance company if your prescribed medication is considered off-label? Um, I think every insurance company is different in what they prefer. Um, I think with as many FDA-approved medications for MS that we have now, it's less likely for an insurance company to actually prefer an off-label, but there's still instances where they might. So if we were wanting an off-label, we might just have to submit the evidence that we're using to choose that medication to begin with to your company for them to review. Well, that actually prompts my very next question. We heard from Lauren, who was recently diagnosed with MS. And Lauren wants to take an off-label medication to manage one of her symptoms because it's less expensive through her insurance. Why is that often the case? Um, a lot of times it's simply because it's a generic medication, so it's no longer branded. And when we get to generics, we can do more studies, um, whether that's at like uh, at academic center just doing studies based on it. it. It's less driven by the drug companies. And so we get data um, across the board on that this medication can work. And then because it's generic, then it's also less expensive. We also have like a lot long, by the time medication gets generic, it's been on the market a long time. So we know a lot about the safety and monitoring of it. Jonathan wants to know if he'll have a choice in his medication or if his insurance company will prefer off-label medications over FDA-approved MS-specific medications because the off-label medications are cheaper. Um, it can happen that insurance wants that preferred um, cheaper alternative, but however, when you're talking with your doctor, you should choose the one that you want the most and then pursue it. Um, if insurance comes back and then you can fight it, that's actually one of my biggest roles that I do is fight insurance on why we want a specific drug. And I want to empower you that you do have a choice. There are different avenues to get the medication that you want. Um, it sometimes depends on how much you want to fight and how much your doctor's office is willing to fight for you too. Are there resources available to help someone like Jonathan compare prices for medication? Yeah. So 
GoodRx is a website that you can go to and type in. It's not super or always accurate. Um, you can get some inaccurate information, but it gives you an idea of like where it costs. You know, you can compare it to one drugstore to another. Not every company will take a GoodRx and you do actually have to present GoodRx to the, the pharmacy um, to get that discount. It's not an automatic cash price. And there are other places like Cost Plus Drugs that um, you can look at, as well as Needy Meds can help you find coupons and um, patient assistance programs. So drug companies, they, they want to show that their medication is accessible. And so a lot of times they provide copay support and patient assistance programs to help you get the medication and stay on it. Walt tells us that he lives with MS, hasn't started a disease-modifying therapy yet, and he's wondering if he needs to try a medication approved for MS before being prescribed an off-label option. His insurance may have step therapy that they want you to try something before they give you access to XYZ. However, it kind of really should depend on a discussion with your doctor about the risks and why that, why that is the medication you want as well as um, then do we have evidence to back that and support it through insurance? And then we just submit that to insurance and try to fight for it. Which off-label medications are being used to treat MS? I think the most common is rituximab. Um, we have, there are places that use that over Ocrevus um, because of cost. We also see it because before Ocrevus was available or the other CD20s that it was the only CD20 we had access to. So even though it was off label, we were utilizing it. Um, and so there's patients that's been on it and we've kept on it. And, and that kind of goes back to some of the medications that we see, the generic um, tablets like um, mycophenolate or something that's been on the market for a long time was when we didn't have as many options, we might've started a patient on it and then they've continued on it. I don't generally see us going that route unless there's a another condition that we're trying to treat together at the same time. Speaking of Ocrevus, uh, Lakin's father lived with primary progressive MS for three decades. He was diagnosed when there were no FDA approved treatment for primary progressive MS. Were there off-label options available to him at that time? There would have been off-label options, but not necessarily that we had great data on. We don't have a lot of options for primary progressive because we can't get that data to show that medications work really well for it. So uh, when Ocrevus was able to show that, that was a big deal. Um, we did have rituximab, which did have some data to support it, but then not enough to get through the FDA. So sometimes we have enough just to, to kind of support it when we don't have other options, um, but not enough to go like, this is definitely safe and effective. Julie has relapsing remitting MS, and she says she's happy with her disease-modifying therapy, but struggles to manage her nerve pain. Are there off-label options to manage specific MS symptoms? Yeah, and that's really where I see a lot of off-label use currently. Um, because we have so many DMTs, I, I see a lot less of that off-label use now, but I do see it in symptom management because um, there are lots of options that um, we know helps treat nerve pain in different populations, not necessarily MS. And so we kind of use that um, and how the, the mechanisms work to choose that therapy. So we'll see lots of um, off-label use when it comes to symptom management. Well, what other common MS symptoms uh, are there that off-label medications might be able to treat? So fatigue, depression, um, even some of the spasticity medications that we use. If we've tried the ones that are on label, we might go to a different trial, a different medication. Um, really a, a lot of your urinary symptoms um, have on label treatments, but we maybe we might use multiple mechanisms to cover something. So examples might be we have depression and nerve pain. So we choose a medication like duloxetine that we know kind of covers both, but not specifically for MS. If someone's interested in exploring an off-label option, where and how should they start? So I, I do think the internet is great and that has lots of information. However, we gotta make sure that the information that we're getting is accurate. So I think, um, you know, being, using the MS Society's website, using 
um, reputable sources and then going to your doctor and having a conversation. So I want you to, to be able to get that information that's out there, but I also want you to talk to a healthcare provider about it so that you can see which medic which information out there is um, actually most accurate. What should that conversation with your healthcare provider be like? What questions should someone be asking? Is my medication meeting our goals that we're, we're wanting it to? Um, and if it's not, then are there other medications that might meet those goals? Go in with an idea of what your goals are and then also ask your doctor what their goals of treatment are. Well, you, you've certainly shared some helpful insights about how off-label medications might be used for managing MS. What would you say is the top takeaway that you'd like our viewers to remember and use? I think the most important thing is that off-label does not mean that we don't have data to support it. So there's still data to support it and it may be more cost effective. It may be the best option for you. And so if you have any concerns at all, that that should be a conversation about um, with your healthcare provider about why we're choosing this medication. But just know that off-label use is very common. It's usually safe as long as we have good data to back it up. Um, so I don't want anybody to feel worried about taking off legal medication when it's used appropriately. Well, thank you for being with us today, Allison. Thank you. Please be sure to visit the National MS Society's website for information and resources on MS, connection opportunities, and ways for you to get involved. You can also connect with an MS Navigator to receive personalized support by phone, email, or through the Society's website by chat. A recording of today's program will be posted on the MS Society's website at nationalmssociety.org slash msexpert, as well as on Facebook and YouTube. And today's program survey has now been posted in the chat to capture your feedback. Please take a minute and complete it to help us create programs and topics with you in mind. Finally, I'll invite you to join me each week on the Real Talk MS podcast where we continue the conversation that we start here. You'll find Real Talk MS on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Thanks again for joining us on Ask an MS Expert. We'll see you next week.